Hi everyone, my name is Prima Media. We're gonna be showing off some cool uh, future Paradox Pokemon, which I thought it would just be a fun thing to talk about and design because Paradox Pokemon are just, well, you know, they're just so unique and stuff, especially the future ones, because, you know, who says that all of us need to make robots? And I think that putting Paradox Pokemon into one certain box that they all have to be takes away a bit of the creativity that Pokemon can offer. Uh, I'm gonna talk about my design. I chose Sfeel for this Paradox version because Sfeel has honestly become one of my favorite Pokemon in the past uh, few years. It just is just cute round and that's sort of not what I wanted to do with this uh, Paradox form. So what I wanted to do is just, just grab Sfeel, make it long. For some reason I thought that would just be hilarious and I really really like just designs that are completely wacky and wild, like a mouse hold, which is super wild and wacky, and I just really love designs like that. If you look at Iron Bundle, that's such a, a wacky, wild Pokemon that I really like, so I wanted to do something with that. What I also wanted to do is make this Pokemon, um, make this Pokemon biological. So this is not a machine, though it looks like one. That's what I wanted to do. So basically, it's a Pokemon that has evolved naturally. You know, it has evolved naturally in the Pokemon world, in the future, but what it has done, the lore is supposed to be that it's one of the last remaining biological Pokemon. And, you know, if we take, uh, if we take the theory that in the future, all Pokemon are mechanical and, you know, not biological anymore, which is like the dark timeline. So if we're going to go with that, then this is one of the last biological Pokemon that sort of, you know, in an evolutionary sense, looked at the machine like Pokemon and thought, you know what, I want to do something like that, but not really entirely. Um, I want to make it my own thing, but sort of resemble that so that maybe I don't get hunted or that, you know, maybe I can, um, you know, hunt other Pokemon uh, like this. And, and just overall, it's a, it, it's a really wacky design. Oh, oh I love it. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's wacky. It's really wacky. That's what I wanted to do. I wanted it to be like a, like a really weird and wild Pokemon. This is the first time that I've only really asked some people... Uh, some of my IRL friends for advice on how to design it um, and honestly it was a real pain in the butt I'm, I, I'm pretty sure that the head is a little bit weird but you know I think it's clear when you look at it it's supposed to be a, um, a submarine that's using you know its head as, as a radar and that it's got all those stripes all over it and like the yellow parts uh, that's because it's, it's bioluminescent it's a bioluminescent creature that lives in the depth of the ocean and it's a steel that has evolved to become a whale-like creature uh, which I've always been a fan of in speculative evolution that it just because when, when it comes to speculative evolution a lot of people are like oh what if birds became the next whales but that doesn't seem as realistic to me as it does with seals because they already are semi-aquatic so I think it would make more sense for for something like Sfield to do this. And it lures uh, prey with its pretty lights and it also communicates uh, with those lights. And you see the little the little Sfields on the side? They're not actually Sfield, they're, they're the lures. So that predator Pokemon think, oh, I'm gonna get a good snack. And then they get, they get chomped up by the big Sfield. I have to say, I think we have like exactly opposite tastes in Pokemon. <laughs> You were you were saying you're like you don't vibe with the with the cool Pokemon and you prefer the the wacky silly ones, the 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 wacky silly ones. You know, in general, like as a as a genre of Pokemon designs, they're not really for me. I love the cool Pokemon, um, but uh, no, this I think this looks really great. If you're in the water and it swims up to you, does it clap? If you imagine like. Just a big tube coming out of the ocean, right? And then like two huge flippers and like bonk, bonk, you know, it's, it's, it's clapping its, uh, its fins. And it, that would also create like a, uh, like a pushback in the water. So I'd be careful. Like it's a, it's definitely like with people, I can imagine its relationship being a friendly giant. Like it's still very nice to people. Um, but you would have to be careful, um, because it can also shock you. Okay, perfect. All right. <laughs> I love the direction of this Paradox Pokemon's feel. It's different. Like, I wouldn't expect it to work. Like, feels round, and everyone knows what feels looks like, but this makes sense. Like, I 
I can see this and I would be able to see it as feel especially with the uh, the port holes on the side those are kind of the giveaway and I like that I'm absolutely in love with the radar face I think it's super awesome especially with the glowing um, eyes and stuff it's almost like the dots on the radar that was really clever yeah I love the radar face because it's definitely it feels like very grounded in in reality in like the technology that we already have you know like I recognized immediately that it's supposed to be like a submarine radar kind of layout and it's 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 a cool contrast from all the other par futuristic paradox pokemon we have because those are all just like vaguely sci-fi but this is like this feels like it could exist in the much nearer future which i think is cool you really you conveyed that well thank you thank you i definitely imagine that it would not be like a, like ten thousand million years in the future like i don't i don't um see that happening it would make sense for this pokemon to exist like maybe one million years into the future because if robotic life takes over eventually this could be like one of the last remaining biological pokemon i'm a super fan of this watery texture on the body it looks it looks great it almost makes him look like he's filled with liquid, but I don't know if animation-wise that that would, like, move or anything, but it still looks really good. Yeah, the texture took a bit, um, because I never, like, I saw this really cool fake mod online that had, like, this really cool texture where it looked like, you know, all, it, it looked like it was underwater and slimy, and I, I, I really wanted to, to do that. Hello? I'm Libris from the channel Umbreon Libris. I do all kinds of stuff on my channel, including art. Amber, I'm glad that you said that yours is one of the last biological creatures, because as I'm about to show you, it is not the only one. I don't really like Paradox Pokemon. I won't go into like all of the reasons that I don't really like them, but generally I feel that both future and past Paradox Pokemon don't live up to the potential of the idea. Exactly. Like, n neither of those groups have enough diversity or have the kind of diversity that I would like to see. So I wanted to make sure that I made a Pokemon that kind of filled a bit of, of that space that's, that's left over. I, I also still wanted to keep to the theme of the future paradoxes. So I didn't want to make something that was like, just like strictly speculative evolution. Um, I've done that before and it's fun but it doesn't quite fit the theme of paradox pokemon you know i wanted to kind of marry those things so the pokemon that i chose is smeargle smeargle is one of my favorite pokemon and it just hasn't really gotten a lot of attention in terms of like new forms new you know new special things for it to um for it to play with to expand the concept of of smeargle and I remember, Amber, when I first mentioned that I wanted to do Smeargle, you were like, oh, a digital artist. I didn't want to do that. So I wanted a non-obvious approach to Paradox Pokemon. I wanted a non-obvious approach to Smeargle. And I wanted a non-obvious approach to what Smeargle does in the future or what a future version of Smeargle does. Because of that, I struggled a lot with the concept. Uh, so I have my patrons but one patron in particular uh null basically came up with like 80 percent of what this entire idea is if not for them my smeargle would would not exist but i'm really happy with it so i'll share it now oh it's, ma it's making things so it's like an artist but in like a completely different way that's so cool it has like little little toys little robots that it built oh that is cute oh i love that oh my god the 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 fact that it's like the the neck is really long which also connects to the tail i think that's a really i think that's really cool and it has the, the, I, I just love the fact that it's, it's just making little things was that the approach you were you were taking yeah so the idea that kind of got me going you know when i when null finally like came up with this idea and that like you know set the the spark in me was to make it a welder. Uh, so that's why it's electric type. So it uses, you know, the, the energy in its tail uh, to weld things together and uh, create these little toy robots. They're they're kind of supposed to be like robot dogs. Smear Smeargle is a dog Pokemon, right? So it, it is also making like dog Pokemon toys. I wanted to make them like super simplified, but still recognizable. So it's just, it just tinkers. It just, 
makes things. Um, this is like the perfect next step for Smeargle, even though it is a future paradox, it almost could pass as a evolution, especially with him being organic. It's like he did evolve, but instead of dying off, like presumably every other paradox Pokemon, it's like he's adapted to the future by creating his own mechanical minions that help him survive in this new mechanical age. I absolutely love that his tail has become like a little welder. And I love that you can actually tell what the Pokemon that he's creating look like with the Growlithe and the uh, L Lillipup and the Rockruff. Yeah, it looks like a little more humanoid too, just with the proportions, which I think is cool because it's like... It kind of alludes to like some speculative future where other species are evolving to be as intelligent as humans. And obviously in Pokemon, we already have that, like with Alakazam and I guess, you know, there's a lot of humanoid Pokemon, but it's cool that Smeargle has now joined their ranks as like pretty much like human shaped and possibly as smart. I think it definitely makes sense too, because art is a thing that at least I, um, and I think many other people equate with high intelligence so def definitely makes sense yeah oh yeah it's adorable and i just just noticed the little gloves like its hand its paws look like little gloves that that's adorable so i, I love the design so cute the original smeargle is based on uh, a beagle right um but i made this one although I, I kept a lot of the like patterns from the original to make sure that they still kind of looked related um i based this one more on a poodle so that I could make the fur be shaped to look like clothes, essentially. So it has a little, it has a little vest. It has gloves. It has like baggy pants. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I really like about this design is that when I when I, when I thought about you know something different with Schmergo, I immediately went to another form of art, and I even thought that like, is it going to be a dark Schmergo that's like AI art based or something? <laughs> Yeah, I wanted something to reference the paw print on the back of the original Smeargle, but you can't see the paw print on the Smeargle, on, on any of the official Smeargle art. So I had to think of a way to put it in a place where it would be visible, and so I thought that, like, wiping your hands on your pants was a pretty good way to do that. The kind of spot around the eye that kind of looks like glasses in the original Smeargle has developed into full-on eye protection which of course it needs because it's welding things together super fan of the the paw print on his pants because that reminds me of what i did as an artist i would wipe ink on my finger on the side of my pants and i would sometimes think about inventing like this uh patch i would put on my pants just for getting the extra ink off the end of my pen nub or something the nexus feel it was also one of the last living organic life forms it is, it is not a machine. It is it is definitely still uh, an, an organic creature. Um, it just makes little robots. I tried to keep the uh, Pokedex entries to the uh, to the style, the format of past Paradox Pokedex entries, so it doesn't have like all of the kinds of lore and detail that I thought for it. I didn't end up putting that all in there because pa past Paradox Pokedex entries are very weird. Um, but I imagine that it keeps like little pieces of metal or whatever that it finds. It just like sticks it in its fur uh, to carry around. Oh, uh, one more thing that I kind of wanted to take the kind of unconventional approach. Um, I didn't really want to name it Iron Something because that's another place where they're all, you know, they're all the same and it, I don't like that. But in this case, I kind of subverted that because it's the, it's the Iron Maker but it's because it makes things from iron. That is smart. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, you're right. You're so right. It likes to make them the, the toys as gifts. It does use them to defend itself as well. If you look at the uh, the list of like key moves that I made, bestow is one of them. Uh, recycle is one of them. So, you know, it's uh, using the things that it finds around to, to make little toys and give them to people. Again, another really good example of a Paradox Pokemon that is in the future, but is not inorganic himself. Hello, my name is Ben, otherwise known as Tam Valley Productions. I am a Pokotuber, primarily known for variety content, 
and theory videos, I think, but I also dabble in fake mon art once in a while. My disclaimer is that I went in the complete opposite direction, despite how we all, you know, even formed this video idea, because we were like, oh, we hate that Paradox Pokemon are robots. But I kind of ended up doubling down and just making the robotiest robot. <laughs> uh, like Libris, I have a lot of issues with the future Paradox Pokemon. Um, and I think one issue is that they all kind of look the same. Like they're from either the same point in the future or like timeline wise, like the same future. Like they're all very sleek and they have the same glowy effects. And it's like, I don't know. You know, there's a lot of potential for other points in the future, like maybe darker timelines where it's a more dystopian future. So I picked one of my favorite Pokemon, Golurk, um, because it's a robot from the past and I wanted to do, you know, a future where Golurk retained its role as like a protector, a guard of humanity, but maybe in like, in like a dark future, like something kind of like Blade Runner or like, you know, some cyberpunk future, maybe Golurk became some, some more malicious and evil, um, you know, instead of like a noble, you know, stone golem, like a knight, it became like a bodyguard or like maybe like a bounty hunter robot like from something like star wars or <laughs> blade runner again um so that's that's kind of what i was rolling with and i will just send it along and we can uh discuss further yeah so presenting um iron sentry oh, oh wow. okay. that, right. that, is, that is that is that is indeed very unconventional but i i really dig it oh and it actually changes both types wow I was definitely pushing the boundaries of Pokemon because, like, both of its arms are pretty much guns. I mean, I kept the glowy effect that you get in some Paradox Pokemon. I mean, all of them pretty much, like, on the right arm. Um, I guess it's left arm, but on the right. Um, so, yeah, it's definitely, I imagine it to just kind of, like, float around, like, dark alleyways and some, you know, futuristic version of any number of cities in the Pokemon world and, like... I, yeah, I pretty much just wanted it to be like a bounty hunter robot, like something that uses the intelligence of Golurk and its fighting style um, and all of its powers, but now just like encased in a, like a true robot body and like, yeah, something kind of creepy almost. On, on that note, like you, you really took this quite far. Like you, uh, it, it doesn't have either of the types from the original Golurk. Uh, it does look quite different. I think if you hadn't uh, mentioned it ahead of time, I don't know how quickly I would have gotten to the conclusion that this was a Golurk, uh, but you kept the like the colors to it, the arm cannons and the, I don't know, the waist cannon, like, cause Golurk's legs can retract, right? Like it has, it has those details there. Um, so I, I think I could get to that conclusion eventually. Yeah, it it it, it goes it goes much farther than any uh, current uh, any real paradox Pokemon does. Just kind of looking at the art, it looks more it, it looks like it could be more like plastic almost, because it doesn't have the like super shiny like brushed chrome <laughs> look that a lot of the uh, a lot of the future paradox uh, Pokemon do. I didn't convey it super clearly, but I imagine that it's not like super refined rare metal like a lot of the paradox pokemon seem to be like this is probably just something that anyone with a good amount of money could buy for themselves and like as i said in the in the deck entry like these serve as like bodyguards pretty much everywhere i imagine like yeah they're they're mass produced and like anyone with you know some nefarious agenda would have them like maybe the the villain teams in the future like they all have at least one <laughs> And it also makes it look more like something that might be mass produced, you know, s some plastic shell. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of what I was going for. Like I wanted it to be grounded. So when I was looking at just like inspiration photos, I was looking at like, if you're familiar with like those Boston Dynamics kind of creepy dog robots <laughs> that are like, um, you know, there's it's like a mix of plastic and metal. I wanted to do something like that. I, I, I really like that. Um, because Golurk is literally, well, it's, it's an organic robot. Yeah. So I, I think it's really cool that this is like a complete contrast of, um, of Golurk. I, I really, I really dig that. One of your problems with Paradox Pokemon was that they tend to be like, they're not from the future. They're just from a place called the future. I, I really like that you took literally the darkest timeline 
if Pokemon are being mass produced, what does that mean for an existence, the existence of Pokemon and life itself? And I think that, you know, not to sound too deep or anything, but I think that, uh, it, you know, makes me think some pretty complex things like what is a Pokemon? You know, when in the future do Pokemon stop being a thing? And can you really even call them Pokemon at that point? I think the steel typing also adds to the mass produced um, factor because Game Freak easily could have made, um, you know, all the future Paradox Mons steel. It, it just made it just makes a lot of sense for this one because it's it's mass produced. You know, it's um, it's a Pokemon that's very common in the future. You know, it is literally the most robot like there is. It's do it, it's again doubling down on the uh, robot robot. I love this way this looks. This almost looks like um, Metroid, but like they tried to copy her pattern and like mass produce her as a drone. But the thing that gave away that it was Golurk for me, his shoulder pads, because they're round just like Golurks are, and the little um, swirls on his arms matched kind of uh, Golurk's pattern that he has on his, his stone and clay pattern that, that kind of matches his colors. The feet disappearing and just becoming the levitation jet slash cannon that um, regular Golurk can usually do. That was really clever. Iron Sentry, again, that... That was a perfect combination of the Future Paradox naming convention, but also like what Golurk became. He's just a war machine now, so all of that is super fitting and I love it. Exactly what would happen to Golurk if he ended up being a future Pokemon. He's not really have a place in the environment, so... Since humans made him as a century, it would make sense that they would do the same thing here. Yeah, that's uh, that's all I got. Hi, and I am Donovan, also known as Gamer Knight on everything else on the internet. And I am from Doodle Lounge with my co-hosts James and Jeff. So the reason I chose Togekiss is way back in Gen 3 as a kid, I had a running theory about Togetic before we had Togekiss because his physical likeness was very much like Latios and Latias. They've all got bird kind of heads, spiky bird heads, long necks, round bodies, and they both surround happiness and pure-heartedness and it's all the same theme so i always had a theory that they were related or he would turn into them somehow when we got togekiss i was understandably confused and a little disappointed because he had lost his cool body shape that he was getting in just became an egg again and so with the paradox pokemon i saw an opportunity to kind of integrate my theory in a way that didn't confirm nor deny it just supply it uh, with this guy, I had him be called Drift Form. Oh, wow. that is super dope. In the games and sometimes in the anime, he's seen just kind of floating in place or he bounces and levitates around like a cloud. Even though he's got a really high speed set as a Pokemon, he can probably fly super fast. He's he's meant more of a an air cleanser, a modernization of classical fairy tale thing. Uh, man-made recreation of a fairy creature um, that's meant to purify what's been poisoned and usually fairies are weak to poison so I made it steel type not only because it's a robot but because now that makes it immune and it can intake that out and purify the poisons um, spitting out like a like what you that jet stream that you see that comes out of the back of jets as like a condensed purify air and it helps clean the atmosphere and then he can use that fuel to power his second form, which is Iron Wing Mach form. Oh, Ooh. that is super That's cool. cool. It's like nice. turning inside out or something. I couldn't ignore the opportunity to turn a robotic Pokemon into a Transformer, where he kind of uh, turns inside out and he, his body parts shift and his blue armor shows up in the, uh, in the neck and the... Uh, the jet boosters on his back you can see the radiation and energy that he's taken from the poisoned air and stored it as his fuel source he can fuel his um energy beams and his jet boosters and whatever he uses all that i decided to put because i didn't want him to look too much like um maridon but i wanted that kind of similarity to the neck um, and then I was like, oh wait, maridon has got kind of a long neck, I could use something like that. So I did something similar, and I decided to kind of keep the, the Togekiss theme by having, like, little 
bits of radiation and pollution within his energy reserves kind of floating around in there yeah, as, as blue and red triangles. It's almost like his system separates them out. I like that the, uh, like, Miraidon energy, uh, you said it's the toxins, but it's still, like, blue and and red, uh, like, triangles. So it still keeps to the theme of the uh, Togepi family and the Lattes. So that's awesome. I think it looks great. I had an idea of how he transformed, where the capsules that hold Togetis' wings extend out and move up to his body and kind of open up. They kind of turn inside out and the, bl- the black cannons come out and his, his, his wings extend out. The uh, toga kiss tail splits in half, flips around and becomes the Latios Latios fins on the back. The blue parts are hidden within the toga, tis- toga kiss body and become the armor of the Latios form. And his neck is able to extend out and the, uh, the spike on top of toga kiss splits open and becomes part of the Latios ears. And on his screen display face, that 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 changes display. No, I, I I feel like I need to see it animated. Like, how does it? I like I I want to see it transform from one into the other. <laughs> I really like how y- y- you've combined two Pokemon. They're completely unrelated. The both forms resemble two different Pokemon, but it makes sense for the tasks that they're doing in that moment. Yeah, just like the fact alone that it's two different Pokemon families, like one regular flying bird-ish family, and then like a legendary duo. It's so cool that you just find a natural connection between the two of them. Like that's something I wish that Paradox Pokemon would do more. I mean, Scarlet and Violet already brought in the idea of like convergent species and all that. So seeing more connections like that would be so cool. This is definitely a design that if it works really well, but if it was 3D, it would work amazingly well. Like I like what Libra said earlier. I I really want to see this Pokemon animated. It wouldn't be necessarily better. It would just highlight the design that already is. What what I like most about the the mock form is that um, Latios sort of looks like a Pez dispenser to me. I don't know why, but I really dig it. Like it looks like you press a button. Like I can easily imagine like you press a button on the body and then like it like juts out. Yeah, I remember some old like Transformers toys where you can like actually uh, change the shape from from one and from like the car form into the mecha form. And I, yeah, I can definitely imagine at one point you just press this button and the head just pops forward. You can easily imagine this thing being a very good toy as well. And it really does like still really look like the Paradox Pokemon that we do have. But this transformation really takes it not even a step further. It's just like, that's the kind of thing that if you're going to do a robotic Pokemon, like do something like that, like that, it, make it surprising in some way. And this certainly is. And yeah, that was the video. Be sure to check these guys out. They have really cool, awesome YouTube channels and they make great art too. Like they are so good at their craft. And I'm looking forward to doing more of these types of art collabs because this was really fun to record. Uh, comment down below what you think of the Pokemon. And yeah, with that being said, I will see you all later. Bye-bye.